recording. Now, is it recording from the right channel? That's the question. Yep. Okay, it's all working. So this project is due, you know, I, <clears throat> I was hoping that people won't be late you know, because of the homework assignment or the project, and that's why I you know, scheduled that to be due at 9 o'clock, you know, just right before the class starts. So I guess some people were, you know, still doing it in the lab or at home and just, you know, on their way here now, maybe. Okay, let me just take a quick look and see how many people have turned it in. 27, not bad. And then we look at how many people are still in the class. We have 37. That's including myself, um, which means about nine people have not turned it in, you know, and that will be late, you know, because you know, there's no way to turn it in at this point. <clears throat> okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the presentation first. So we basically skipped a whole bunch of topics, you know, because we've spent a lot of time to talk about how to put a PC together. But I think that gives you the exposure, you know, both to the software and the hardware, and also how computers work in general. And you know, we'll do we'll be doing a presentation next Tuesday and next Thursday. Um, I will try to find volunteers to go on Thursday uh, on Tuesday. And some people last year, you know, prefer to go first to go on the first day instead of the second day. Um, and if you prefer that, you know, just let me know, and I can schedule you know you you know on the on the on the Tuesday instead of Thursday. We'll go ahead and take a look at the presentation outline. And the pr okay, do you guys want to do a three-minute presentation or four-minute presentation? We have enough time to do a four-minute. You want three, four? Three. How about we make it three to four minutes? Okay, so people who want to spend a little more time to talk about stuff that you want to talk about can spend up to four minutes, and people who want to spend less time, you know, three minutes is the minimum. As I said in the previous class, I think the challenge is not to find enough material to fill up the time. It has to do with condensing and organizing, you know, the concept, the ideas, or what you want to talk about to fit within that time frame and still make it an effective presentation. <clears throat> and the list of suggestions, you know, the first one is, it's not really a joke. I mean, if people want to, you know, do it this way, I have no problem with that. Okay, this class is boring and pointless. I didn't learn anything useful. Now, but that's okay as long as the presentation tells me what is not useful about it and, you know, how I can make it more useful. You know, how, you know, what do you want to get out of this class? So in this case, I doubt that three minutes is sufficient. So go ahead and pick the most pointless topics first. <clears throat> you know, such as the LMMS, you know, that sort of stuff. Okay, one topic of this course is particularly useful. In this case, focus on the topic and tell me how that topic is useful. Um, for instance, you know, if you, you know, if you are planning to put a PC together anyway, and, you know, this class, you know, kind of helped you in the process, of selecting the components, you know, and stuff like that. You can talk about that. You can actually use your PC project and turn it into a you know quick you know presentation. So that means you don't have to do extra research anymore. You just have to you know, bring up you know all the the specifications that you have already selected and just briefly explain to the class in three or four minutes you know why you select those particular components are there any interesting about the PC that you're putting together how does it compare to say a Dell equivalent computer and stuff like that <coughs> okay and or you can also use you know this one you know this these are just examples and suggestions you can definitely definitely talk about a lot more you know than these topics because of this class I'm looking into a computer slash information science field as my career so in that case, tell me what field or what type of career that you're considering and what topics in this class is or are relevant. Okay, you can bring up, I want to be a PC or a computer technician. So in that case, you know, the, t the discussion of the motherboard, the case, you know, the, the PCI <coughs> express cards, you know, can be helpful. 
or if you want to be a let's say computer network administrator, then the discussion of the computer network you know would be helpful. <coughs> now, as a suggestion, it is not required. You probably want to look into using a presentation software. Microsoft PowerPoint is one. It is a commercial product. If you don't have it installed, you know I don't think it is worth the money to install it just for this class. If you already have Open Office, Open Office has a component called Impress, and that's their version of the presentation software. It is compatible with PowerPoint. If you have PowerPoint files. Open Office Impress can open and edit those files, and then save it again as a PowerPoint file. So it's it's pretty useful. <coughs> you can also use you know a whiteboard presentation, or you know use a um, you can also use you know pre-written you know how do you call those things charts. Hmm? Um, poster board. Poster board. Yeah, poster board, and they also make a you know gigantic uh, post-its these days. If you go to a like like Office Depot, they make you know post-its. They are the same size as a poster, so you can actually pre-make a whole bunch of that stuff, and then just you know put it on the whiteboard here. And then as you talk about stuff, you can just you know move along. Is that Prezi too? That other one that you showed? Hmm? Prezi. Prezi. Yeah, Prezi is good too. You know that's a that's a web-based uh, resource. <coughs> the scoring will be. You know, rubric based. In other words, you know, I cannot find a way to scientifically, you know, do the the scoring, which is what I usually prefer. The content delivery points to be multiplied by two. Is the content delivered? Okay. You know, in other words, does the audience understand the main points of the presentation and how the points connect? Most commercials will get four points. In this case, we get fours. In this case. Especially the Mac versus PC ones. In other words, uh, they they use a very short amount of time to very effectively make a point to the target audience. Okay. So basically, zero point will be assigned to people when the audience, including me, do not get the point at all. Okay. I don't think anyone will get zero points. One point will be assigned if the audience may get a hint of the point, but most people have a hard time following you know, the points and how they connect. Two points for something that is satisfactory; the content is delivered, and four points for an exceptional delivery. Not only is the content delivered, but the audience also get excited, exited, typo, and interested in the topic. Okay. In other words, you know, do you keep the audience captive? A two is you know, basically a minimum to get the point across. A four means that you are a very good you know presenter, and people are not you're not just getting the point across. People actually get interested you know because of the way you present. Okay. <coughs> the second one or the, the second category would be delivery style. How professional is the delivery regardless of the content? Okay, so I just want to make it very clear. That some presentation may have like all the points possible for delivery style, but have no content and therefore get the zero point for the content. <laughs> okay. Okay. Examples of people who are likely to get fours: Bill Clinton,、uh, Ronald Reagan. Because I don't want to be partisan, so I have to include members of both parties. If you're in the Green Party, I'm sorry. I just you know I'm not that familiar with Green Party people. And I don't think we ha we have ever had a Green Party president, so you know that's fair. <clears throat> okay, telemarketers, you know, to a very large extent, you know, despite the content. So once again, you know, there are people who have you know good and professional delivery style with no content. Okay, especially if you watch the infomercials, a lot of times, you know, they just give you a lot of splashy stuff. They say buy this, buy this, buy this. <laughs> But they don't really tell you why you should buy that, other than oh, it is so cool to buy it. <clears throat> people, examples of people who are likely to get ones, not very good scores. A random person interviewed on the street by a news station. In case you haven't noticed, okay, they they usually pick the best of the bunch already. Yeah, you know, most of the time they would actually interview four or five people and then pick the best out of the four or five. To actually make it to the news, but most of the time, yeah, those people do not really talk well in front of a computer. 
<clears throat> so the point assignments will be kind of loosely like this. Zero points for people who have way too many pauses, uh, um, you know, lack of eye contact, staring at the floor, talking to the whiteboard, that sort of stuff. Okay. Are there any questions about this part? So basically, you, know, you just want to try to make eye contact and think before you talk. That will help to reduce the pauses, the uhs, and the ums. I mean, I do it too. I mean, when, if I watch my own video, you know, I will do that you know, sometimes as well. So it's not like you cannot do it. It's just you know, if you think ahead of time, okay, this is what I want to talk about before you start to talk, then you can reduce the amount of all of these things. One point for people who have some pauses, some pauses, some us, but otherwise, you know, is okay. Now, obviously, this is somewhat suggest, uh, sub subjective. Two points for people who have satisfactory presentations. Not all inspiring or evangelical, but smooth and professional. Okay, think about, you know, business presentations for the most part. You know, they get the point across, they're professional, they, they, they know what they're talking about, they don't pause too much, but at the same time, it's kind of dry and, you know, possibly boring. And four points for people who are all inspiring Okay, now that obviously is subjective, okay, because I may not be interested in certain topics as, as much as other topics. So whether it's all inspiring, I would try to be more objective when I grade this. In other words, if someone talks about a topic that I usually is not really interested in, I would just, you know, take that into consideration and say, okay, I know I'm not really interested in a topic, but does this person make it more interesting than it could have been, you know, if it were somebody else making the presentation? <clears throat> and that person will have to keep the attention of the audience constantly, not a single moment of boredom. Well, if the whole presentation is only three minutes, so it, that makes you know the lack of boredom a little bit easier. Remember, I have to talk about stuff for what eighty minutes, you know, in a row, and obviously I don't keep you guys you know excited all the time. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, visual aid, that's the last part. Does the presentation use visual aid effectively? Note that you do not have to use PowerPoint or a computer to get the maximum number of points. Ross Perot is a prime example of how you can do it with low tech. Okay, Use, he used flip charts quite effectively. I'm pretty sure you can still find, you know, uh, video clips on YouTube about, you know, his presidential, you know, stuff, you know, way back. What was it? What was the year? Was it 2000 or before that? It was before that. It was before that? Mm -hmm. You can probably find it. You know, just go to YouTube, find, you know, Ross Perot presentation or Ross Perot, you know, president or something like that. You know, you'll probably find his old presentations where, you know, he was just sitting in front of a computer with a pile of, you know, pre prepared, you know, charts. And he was just going through those, you know, one by one, but he was talking in a way that is interesting. He kept, you know, the attendance, the attention of the audience. And he also made a very, he, he was also very effective. He got the point across. Okay. So that was not his reason of not getting elected. <laughs> his presentation was fine. <clears throat> okay, so in this case, um, zero points to people who have no visual aid whatsoever. In other words, someone who comes up, you know, and just talk, 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 with nothing to help in the presentation. Okay, one point for some for people with some visual aid, but it is inefficient, ineffective, not accurate, or difficult to read because of bad penmanship, poor contrast, and etc. Okay, so this is this has to do with. You know, it's not even the content of what is written. It's whether people can see what is written. Okay? Two points for, you know, people who get a, you know, somewhat satisfactory job done. The visual aid relates to the topic, but it does not particularly stand out. The audience is not likely to remember the visual aid 